From not getting a single scholarship offer outside of his home state to signing a contract worth over a half a billion dollars, Patrick Mahomes was overlooked and unwanted. Now, he's the king of the NFL. How high is he going to climb on the greatest of all time? Here's how Mahomes went from three-star recruit to the league's undisputed best player. Patrick was born to be a professional athlete. His dad spent 11 years as a Major League Baseball pitcher, and while growing up in Texas, there was nothing Mahomes couldn't do athletically. By age 10, he could already throw a baseball well over 200 feet, and once he got to White House High School, Mahomes starred in three different sports – football, baseball, and basketball. As just a freshman, he was starter on the varsity basketball team. By his senior year, Mahomes averaged 19 points and 8 rebounds per game. But while what he did on the hardwood was impressive, the diamond was where Mahomes Holmes really shine. A childhood friend and teammate through college swears that from the age of 8 until 18, he only ever saw Mahomes strike out twice. And not only was he a beast at the plate, as a senior, Mahomes threw a no-hitter with 16 strikeouts. His throwing was an absolute gas, too, with his fastball topping out in the mid-90s. Mahomes was so dominant that Perfect Game rated him as the number 35 overall prospect in all of Texas. He would have been a serious prospect for the 2014 MLB draft, but teams didn't think that he was ready to give up on playing football. Still, Mahomes was taken by the Detroit Tigers in the 37th round, but the other teams were right about his commitment to both sports, and he never signed a contract with the Tigers. Mahomes believes that this experience playing both sports actually had a major influence on his football skills, saying, I think a lot of my improvisation is from baseball and how I could sling the ball across the diamond. I played shortstop my whole life. I never had my feet under me. I was always making throws across my body. This unique skill set helped Mahomes develop into an unstoppable high school quarterback. As a junior in his first year being the varsity starting QB, he threw for 3,839 yards and 46 touchdowns. Mahomes followed this up his senior year by shredding the competition for 4,619 passing yards and 50 touchdowns, while also rushing for 948 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was such an all-around freak athlete that he was named Max Prep National Male Athlete of the Year. But despite this massive honor and the insane stats, Mahomes was somehow only rated a three-star football recruit by rivals, ESPN, and 24-7 sports. As unbelievable as it may seem, not a single D1 school outside of the state of Texas offered him a scholarship. And according to Adam Cook, Mahomes' high school football coach, his only official offers were from Texas Tech, Houston, and Rice. With slim pickings, Mahomes committed to Texas Tech to play football and baseball. Mahomes arrived on campus determined to prove everything everyone wrong, from the recruiting services that underrated him to the programs that didn't believe in him. But he had to wait his turn. Mahomes entered his freshman football season as a backup. He didn't get his chance until the latter half of the season when the starter went down with an injury. And starting Texas Tech's last four games, Mahomes went out with a bang. In the season finale against fifth-ranked Baylor, he set a Big 12 freshman record for most passing yards and touchdowns in a game with 598 and 6. This was the launch pad for his national coming out party. As a sophomore, Mahomes led the nation in total offense per game and was fourth in passing yards. He also became one of just five quarterbacks in FBS history to pass for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns while also rushing for at least 450 yards and 10 touchdowns. Then, before his junior year, Mahomes announced that he was leaving the baseball program to focus solely on football. With baseball in his rearview mirror, he led the country in yards per game with 421, total passing yards with 5,052, total offense with 5,003 312 yards, and total touchdowns with 53. Having shown that there wasn't a throw he couldn't make, Mahomes decided to forego his senior year and declare for the 2017 NFL Draft. With that being said, I would like to announce I will forego, forego my senior season and declare for the 2017 NFL Draft. Despite being the starter for less than two and a half seasons, he finished third in school history in passing yards and touchdowns with 11,252 and 93. And with Mahomes having just put up crazy college numbers while playing the game's most important position, you'd think teams would be dying to draft him. And yet, he was the second quarterback off the board, sliding all the way to the Kansas City Chiefs with the 10th overall pick. To be able to take him, they traded the 27th pick, a 2017 third-round pick, and their 2018 first-round pick to the Bills. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes, the second.
quarterback. At the time, the Chiefs already had the ultra-reliable Alex Smith, so trading up to use a top-10 pick on his backup seemed crazy. But Kansas City saw something in Mahomes that no other team did, and it wasn't until Week 17 of the following season when everyone else finally got to see it for themselves. With the Chiefs resting Smith for the upcoming playoffs, Mahomes made his debut in Denver against the Broncos. Then, with the Chiefs knocked out of that year's playoffs, they made a move that shocked the league. Right before the Super Bowl, they traded Alex Smith to Washington, having shipped away their team leader coming off back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, Kansas City couldn't have made their belief in Mahomes any more clear. The Chiefs were all in on him, and the 2018 season was his chance to prove them right. All he did was go out there and set the league on fire, throwing for 5,097 yards and 50 touchdowns. He was first in passing touchdowns by 11 and second in passing yards by only 32. So, in just his first full year as a starter and his second year in the NFL, Mahomes won the league's MVP award, made the Pro Bowl, and was named First Team All-Pro. And it wasn't just individual success for him that year. His team made the AFC title game for the first time since 1993, before falling to the eventual Super Bowl-winning Patriots in a 37-31 overtime thriller. Mahomes never saw the football in overtime. The following season was a chance for Mahomes to cement his place as the next face of the league. That year, his numbers were down some. But this was the result of him missing two games due to injury. He still finished the regular season with 4,031 yards, 26 touchdowns, and only five interceptions. Despite the slight drop-off from Mahomes, the Chiefs still finished first in the AFC. And legends aren't made in the regular season anyway. So when the playoffs rolled around, it was time for Mahomes to try and take his team somewhere they hadn't been in 50 years. But in their divisional round matchup with the Texans, it looked like they were going nowhere. In the second quarter, the Chiefs trailed 24-0 as every Everybody in Arrowhead was completely stunned. 10.54 to go in the first half, and it's 24 to nothing Houston. But then Mahomes woke his teammates up, and Kansas City came roaring back. The Chiefs put on an offensive show, scoring 41 unanswered points and winning 51 to 31. And of course, leading the way was Mahomes, with 321 passing yards and five touchdowns. Then, in the AFC title game against the Titans, Kansas City fell behind early again, trailing 17-7 in the second quarter. Mahomes took over as he finished with 294 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, 53 rushing yards, and one rushing touchdown, leading his team to a 35-24 victory. But against the 49ers, the task was even taller, as with under 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, San Fran led 20-10. Somehow, Mahomes turned that deficit on the game's biggest stage into a double-digit win as the Chiefs won 31-20. For his amazing efforts, he was named Super Bowl MVP, becoming the youngest quarterback and the third youngest player in NFL history to win the award. Because Mahomes had pulled off so many unthinkable feats so early in his career, Kansas City decided to do something unheard of. In July of 2020, Mahomes signed a 10-year extension worth $477 million with another $26 million in potential bonuses for a total of $503 million. That is obviously the biggest story today. Patrick Mahomes' new mega 10-year extension with the Chiefs, the largest contract in sports history. Coincidentally, the kid who grew up playing baseball received the type of contract normally reserved for MLB stars, not football players who could get hurt and replaced at any moment. But what became abundantly clear was that you can't replace Patrick Mahomes. He made throws nobody else could make, saw the field differently than everyone else. And in 2020, he was determined to prove that he was worth every penny of his mega deal. He led the Chiefs to a 14-1 start, throwing for 4,740 yards and 38 touchdowns, with only six interceptions. After resting in Week 17 to get ready for another postseason run, Mahomes got his team back in the AFC title game for the third straight year. Facing the Bills, the Chiefs coasted to a 38-24 win, as Mahomes threw for 325 yards and three touchdowns. But next up for him and his team was Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, the GOAT versus the Prodigy. It was supposed to be the coronation of the league's next. Next king, except Brady and the Bucks made everyone pump the brakes. Tampa's defense took advantage of Kansas City's injury depleted offensive line and pressured Mahomes a Super Bowl record 29 times. Once again, it was Buccaneer pressure to throw that off. The Bucks won 31 to 9, and they held Mahomes to 270 yards and zero touchdowns, picking him off twice. Brady was named Super Bowl MVP, reminding everyone that the league was still his, and nobody was knocking him off his throne. 
yet. This motivated Mahomes for the 21 season, as he threw for nearly 5,000 yards and 37 touchdowns. But his goal wasn't to put up flashy regular season numbers. He was looking for that elusive second ring. And as the playoffs began, Mahomes seemed well on his way to doing this. In the wild card round against the Steelers, he threw for 404 yards and 5 touchdowns in an easy 42-21 win. Then, in what people believed was the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl, the Chiefs faced off against their rival AFC powerhouse, the Buffalo Bills. The game lived up to the hype, as the teams combined for 25 points in the final two minutes to send it into overtime. Following these late fireworks, Mahomes went 5-for-5 five five on his way to hitting Travis Kelsey for the game-winning touchdown. He finished with an insane 378 passing yards, 69 rushing yards, and four touchdowns. Simply put, Mahomes looked unstoppable. Then, facing the Cincinnati Bengals in the conference championship, the Chiefs were on the doorstep of taking a commanding 18-point lead into halftime. But as Mahomes and Kansas City butchered the clock management, it left the door open for Joe Burrow and the Bengals. With newfound life, Cincinnati came roaring back and held the high-powered Chiefs offense to just three second-half points, sending the game into overtime. As Kansas City got the ball to start OT, everyone assumed Mahomes would drive them down the field like he always does. But on the third play, he threw an interception that set up the Bengals to win the game. Despite having made an absurd four straight AFC title games, Mahomes, for the first time in years, began to hear doubts. Did the lights get too bright for him on his second straight season? Were the Bengals the new top dogs in the AFC? The noise outside only got louder when his favorite receiver Tyreek Hill was traded to the Dolphins. Tyreek Hill has been traded from Kansas City to Miami. Off-season conversations were dominated by people wondering if Mahomes' success was just a product of having lethal weapons like Hill and Travis Kelsey at his disposal. But all this talk only pushed Mahomes to go harder. He wanted his 2022 campaign to send a message to the world that he didn't need anybody's help to succeed. So, Mahomes went out and led the league in passing yards with 5,250 and passing touchdowns with 41, on his way to being named MVP for the second time in his career. Having earned a first-round bye, Kansas City looked primed for another deep postseason run. But in their divisional round matchup with the Jaguars, everything changed. During the first half, Mahomes got crunched and rolled up on by two Jacksonville defenders. Mahomes is hurt. He got hit hard on this play. Looks like the ankle got twisted up under Arden Key as he got sandwiched as he let go of the football. He was in immediate, noticeable pain as he struggled to put any pressure on his right ankle. Mahomes tried to battle through it, but he clearly wasn't himself out there. When the Chiefs made him go get a quick x-ray, his frustration came pouring out as he slammed his jacket to the ground before hobbling to the locker room. In the blink of an eye, Kansas City went from Super Bowl favorites to questionable to survive their opening playoff game. But as Mahomes emerged from the locker room, it was like Superman coming out of the phone booth. He powered through the excruciating pain of a high ankle sprain to will his team to a 27-20 win. But the joy of victory quickly faded, as Mahomes knew his mission would only get harder from there. Waiting for him was his new arch-nemesis, Joe Burrow. Lately, Burrow's Bengals had owned Mahomes and the Chiefs, winning the three previous meetings. All week leading up to the game, Mahomes had to listen to people call his home field Burrowhead. The Burrowhead and the I'm him, like, that's in the heat of a game. Burrowhead is wild, though. The Cincinnati mayor even made a joke about Burrow being Mahomes' father. Whereas Joseph Lee Burrow, who's 3-0 against Mahomes, has been asked by officials to take a paternity test confirming whether or not he's his father. And on top of this, there were still plenty of questions and doubts about how his ankle would hold up. But come game time, Mahomes would have the last laugh. In another all-time classic, he threw for 326 yards and two touchdowns, while leading his team to a 23-20 victory. Hey, I got some wise words! for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! The last thing left for Mahomes to do on his revenge tour was slay the Eagles in the Super Bowl. But when halftime rolled around, it looked like he was about to come up just short. The Chiefs trailed Philly by 10, and Mahomes had just re-aggravated his ankle. But by now, people should know better than to doubt his ability to bounce back, which is exactly what he did. On each of Kansas City's three second-half drives, Mahomes led them to a touchdown. After the Eagles tied the game with five minutes to go, he then orchestrated a 66-yard drive to set up an easy, game-winning chip shot field goal. The kick is away and go! By being named Super Bowl MVP, Mahomes became the first player to win that award, league MVP, and lead the league in passing yards and touchdowns all in the same season. With Brady retiring, the NFL needed a new king, and that season was the perfect coronation, letting everyone know the league belongs to Patrick Mahomes. Long live the king.